Okay, so like anyone else out there ever get that like instant wave of dread? Yeah. When someone even just says math. Oh, yeah. That's like a universal thing, right? It is. But this article we're diving into today makes this really cool point about how math skills are actually way more relevant to our daily lives mm -hmm. than we often like give them credit for. Yeah, for sure. It's so true. It goes way beyond oh, really? like balancing your checkbook or something. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like this whole math literacy thing, right? Like, yeah. Just being comfortable enough with numbers that you can navigate all those everyday things, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I love about this article. They use examples like planning a trip on a budget, which who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. Or figuring out will that new couch I want actually even fit through my door. Right. It's empowering. Totally. That confidence, even just a basic level with numbers, it opens up so much. It does. It does. But what about that feeling we get where it's like, oh, I could never be a math person. Uh -huh. you know? That voice in your head that pipes up. Absolutely. We hear you. As soon as you see an equation or something. It's that fear. This article really digs into those mental blocks that we kind of put up which it's so important because usually it's less about how our brains actually work with math and more about like our past experiences totally like the article talked about fear of failure yeah that like just freezing up when you get an answer wrong oh yeah happens to all of us and you feel like you're just not smart enough to figure it out we've all been there that's where this growth mindset idea comes in yes instead of thinking our abilities are fixed like we're either good at math or we're not it's that belief that we can actually get better right. with effort right. and practice. Yeah. It's like rewiring how we see a challenge as a chance to grow, not a threat. Love that. And sometimes it's not even us, right? It's the, the way math is taught. Oh, for sure. The article talked about that, how traditional teaching just doesn't work for every brain. Not at all. Some people, lectures are great, but others... They need to do something with it. That's where knowing your learning style is huge. Our yeah. brains are just wired differently. There's no one right way to get math. Makes total sense. Yeah. So we've talked about the challenges, but what do we do? How do we actually get better? This article gives this whole toolkit of strategies. I love that. And it's not all about like crazy formulas and stuff. It's building that base of feeling good with numbers. Absolutely. It's for anyone, honestly. Whether you use math every day at work or just want to feel confident splitting a bill with friends. Totally. One thing I thought was great was they really stress setting realistic goals, like starting small, even just 20 minutes a day. Yeah, it's about consistency, not cramming. Way more doable. Totally. And there's a reason that works. Our brains, the way they form connections when we practice regularly, it's like building a math muscle. Oh, I love that analogy. Yeah. And just like you need the right space to work out. Or they talk about your study zone being important too. Makes a huge difference. That quiet space, no distractions, it signals to your brain, okay, it's learning time. It's true. And speaking of tools, I love how the article's into modern learning stuff. They even mention Khan Academy, YouTube channels like Numberphile. Yeah. It's, it's not just textbooks anymore. It's so good. What's cool about those is they often make it like a game, especially helpful if traditional learning wasn't your thing. Totally. Yeah. Which actually leads perfectly into the next part of the article. We're going to break down those learning styles because I think this is where it gets really personal. Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really interesting, figuring out what works for you. So they break it down, visual, auditory, kinesthetic learners. Okay. So all my visual people out there, this one's for you. It's about making math something you can see. Exactly. Diagrams, using colors in your notes mind map stuff and that shows you how ideas connect and it makes sense our brains they're wired to remember images so well when you can picture a concept it sticks with you way stronger memory right then we've got our auditory learners so if hearing things is how you learn best they say talk it out explain it to yourself even it's true or find those podcasts those videos that break stuff down in a way that's engaging to listen to like turning your study session into your own little podcast basically exactly and last but not least, kinesthetic learners. This is all about like hands-on making it real. They have this example, using blocks or measuring cups to understand fractions. Oh, I love that because it takes it out of the textbook, right? It's not just numbers on a page anymore. Totally. Or making graphs, but using real data, something from your own life. That's that aha moment when you feel it click. Yes. And, you know, speaking of getting help, they talk about tutors, study groups. And I think it's important. This isn't giving up. It's realizing everyone learns different. And sometimes 
you need that extra boost. It's so true. It's more like learning is a team sport sometimes. Yeah. Even explaining something to someone else, it can make it clearer in your head. Like to teach it, you have to know it twice as well or whatever that saying is. Yep. Okay, ready for the best part. This article talks about dot making math fun. I have to admit, when I saw that heading, I was like, really? Right. But they actually had good points. It's not all formulas and drills, Sudoku, chess, even those math apps, which, let's be honest, gamification is huge these days. And for good reason. When we play, even as adults, our brains are getting those little rewards, those feel-good chemicals. It takes the pressure off. Plus, think about it. Those games, it's all strategy, logic. That's all math-related. But you're not thinking about it that way. Sneaking in the learning. And it's not just on a screen either. Puzzles, board games, building Legos, stuff we probably already like doing. Exactly. It's not work if you enjoy it. Yeah. Right? But okay, we've talked about the hurdles, the strategies, even the fun stuff. But how does this actually show up in our lives? Like, where's the real world application? That's the key question, right? Getting from the theory to actually using it. And they had some really good examples, really relatable ones. Oh, they did? Yeah. Like, one of my favorites, they talked about adjusting recipes, which... Think about it. Baking is a math problem, but with and delicious results. It really is. You're using fractions, conversions, all that, but you're focused on the yummy outcome. Right. Okay. And then another one, they talked about planning trips, but like sticking to your budget. Right. Which, come on, who couldn't use help with that? The worst is going over budget, right? Yeah. <laughs> but using math, you can compare prices, track what you're spending. It just makes you smarter about it. It's like taking control instead of just guessing and hoping for the best. And for anyone into like DIY decorating, they even had a whole bit on using math for furniture. Oh, the number of times I've eyeballed something and it did not fit. Measuring is key. Right. They were talking about like making sure that couch you buy online will actually fit through your door, all that. Avoiding those DIY fails. It's all about planning. And honestly, that's a math skill in itself. Totally. So we've covered a lot in this deep dive. Those mental blocks we get, the ways to actually practice. We even found the fun in math. But as we're wrapping up, what, what would you say is like the biggest thing to remember from this whole article? Honestly, I think it's letting go of needing to be perfect. It's about the progress, not acing every problem on the first try. Love that. It's like celebrating those small wins along the way, yeah. like finally getting a concept or solving something you thought you couldn't. Exactly. Math is a journey. It's not a race. And any journey is more fun when you're enjoying the ride, right? Such a good point. So I want to leave everyone with this. Think about just one area in your life where feeling even a little more confident with math could help you out. What would that be? Keep that in mind as you go about your day. You might be surprised what you come up with.